Hello Year 2 and welcome to our Under the Sea Week. We're going to be looking at lots of different sea creatures, um, lots of different animals that live in the sea, lots of different things about the sea. Uh, as you can see, I'm under the sea. I'm very good at breathing underwater. Uh, and I've got for you here the Big Book of the Blue and this is actually one of our Year 2 must reads. It's quite long and there's a lot in here, so I'm not going to read all of it. But I thought I'd just show you because there's some really, really lovely pictures in here as well. And it might just help you with some sea creatures that you might be learning about this week. So, we've got a big page here. In fact, I'll move a bit closer to see if you can see. So we've got ocean families. What kinds of animals live in the ocean? There are lots of animal families that live in the sea. Some are hairy, some have scales, some have fins, and some are boneless and brainless. Hmm. Fish. So there's lots of fish that live in the sea, aren't there? Including sharks, rays, swordfish, flying fish, seahorses and puffer fish. They all have gills, uh, which is the things on the side of their heads that help them to breathe. They're cold blooded, so a bit like reptiles, uh, and have a skeleton of bone or cartilage. So they've all got bones. Then there's mollusks. That includes octopuses, squids, sea snails, oysters, clams and mussels. And again, they have gills, a bit like fish. Uh, they're cold-blooded and they live, some live inside a shell. So you can see some of these ones here live inside a shell, but obviously an octopus and a squid doesn't, does it? Uh, then there's crustaceans, that's these ones here. So that includes crabs, lobsters, shrimp and krill. They have gills. They're cold-blooded, uh, but they have a hard skeleton on the outside of their body. So they're a little bit different to the others, aren't they? Then we have mammals. These are some of my favourites. Uh, it includes seals, whales, which I love, dolphins, I absolutely love. They have lungs, so it's a bit different to fish. They've got lungs a bit like a human. Uh, they have furry or bristly skin. They are warm-blooded, so that's why they're a mammal, isn't it? Because humans are mammals, we're all warm-blooded. Uh, and they have a bony skeleton, again, a bit like a human. And then we have reptiles. So that includes sea turtles, sea snakes. They have lungs, they're cold blooded, uh, and they have bones and scaly skin. So they're a little bit different, aren't they, to mammals? Uh, and then as we go through, it then has all of the different animals. It tells us about ones with fins, uh, flippers, um, gills and blowholes, how they all breathe. Um, there's a whole page all about sea turtles and how they um, lay their eggs on the sand. It's really lovely. Uh, there's one about flying fish. There's one about seahorses. They are a bit strange, aren't they? Because the, the male seahorse is the one that has the babies instead of the female, like every single other animal. Uh, we've got jellyfish. Some really lovely things there about jellyfish. Um, again, I won't show you all of it because if you see how thick this book is, I think it would take me days to read every single page. But I'll read you, um, because we were looking at whales, weren't we, in year two before. Um, actually, we didn't look at this book, did we? So we'll have a look. Why is a whale so big? A whale can grow to be very big because the water around it supports its weight. The blue whale is longer than a basketball court and has a heart as big as a small horse. Wow, that's big. Uh, it's bigger than the biggest dinosaur. So that links to what we were doing last week, doesn't it? Breath of fresh air. A whale breathes through a hole in its head. When a baby whale is born, its mum pushes it to the surface to take its first breath. So they don't breathe through gills, do they, like, um, like fish do. They breathe like a mammal out of their, almost like a mouth, isn't it? Or a nose, their blowhole, but it's on the top of their head. A humpback whale sends messages to its friends by slapping the surface of the waters. They do it with their tail, and that sends a message across the top of the ocean, and other whales can hear it. That's amazing, isn't it? Peas in a pod. A whale lives in a group called a pod. It's a bit like a dolphin, as well. They live in pods as well. Wailing whales. Some male whales sing romantic, low-pitched, eerie songs in the hope that a lady whale will be listening. And actually, you can have a listen to some of those on, um, on YouTube. If you Google whale songs or um, whales talking and things like that, you can hear them. And they're really noisy, actually, under the water. Um, we'll read one 
This one I find is amazing. These are called dragonettes. A bit strange, aren't they? Does a dragonette breathe fire? No. <laughs> a dragonette gets its name from its brightly coloured frilly fins that make it look like a Chinese paper dragon. And if I zoom in there, you can see. It does. It looks like it could be one of those paper dragon kites, doesn't it? In like the Chinese New Year. Um, slime alert. Sometimes a dragonette clo uh, cloaks itself in a stinky slime to stop it from being eaten. Ugh. Walking on water, a dragonette swims along the bottom of the sea. Its fast moving fins make it look as though it's walking on the sea floor. So it uses these ones on the bottom here and it pushes itself along the sea floor. So it looks a bit like it's walking. It's clever, isn't it? Uh, big yourself up. A male dragonette has a long spine on its back, so it's this here, uh, that he sticks up to make himself look bigger. So he does that again to show off to the ladies. Uh, and then we've got fantastic moves. A male dragonette performs a special frilly fin dance to attract a female. And then we've got tiny dragon. A mandarin dragonette is only six centimetres long. So that's oh, about that long. It's not very long at all, is it? Um, like all dragonettes, it has thick skin instead of scales to protect itself from sharp rocks. Because they swim at the bottom of the ocean. They don't want to catch their skin on the rocks, do they? Um, so that's just a couple of pages from here. But hopefully throughout this week, I'll read you some more. Um, because they're really, really lovely facts. And I know that some of you have actually got this book at home, haven't you? So you can have a look yourselves. Um, and please make sure you're sending in all of your... Um, your fact files that you're going to be making this week. Uh, you're going to be writing some uh, stories and descriptions about some different pictures. And on Friday, you're going to be writing a shape poem. So in the shape of a uh, sea creature, you're going to write a poem about one. So really looking forward to what you um, are doing at home. Uh, hope you're keeping well and safe and we'll see you soon.